Good afternoon. I'm back with my third installment on my garden journal. When last I left you, we were talking about making the craft text covers, and I had already put together the signatures. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the difference between making uh, a cover that just went around like a normal case-bound book and then one with a flap. I just briefly wanted to show you that this uh, when I completed this book, I decided to do this ribbon and button closure. This ribbon is the silk ribbon from uh, Anna Griffith, and Griffin, and I uh, put two holes with grommets uh, that were far enough apart for the holes of the button, but not so far apart as to be visible outside the diameter of the button. And the way that you can do that is to actually trace the button and place that on your cover and mark your holes accordingly. And then I sewed through uh, the ribbon as I was uh, doing the button by just overlapping the ribbon a little bit and then sewing through that so I have a double thickness of ribbon underneath there and it won't tear out. So that's briefly about that. On this cover, I had talked to you about the fact that I was going to do some stickles and ribbons and things and that's what I did with the cover and we'll flip through this in a moment. Uh, <clears throat> And, and see the pages inside. But first, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about binding. Uh, this is very, very hard to see that this is graph paper, but what I used was this gridded paper. Uh, this is marked at eighth of an inch intervals. I got it from Hobby Lobby, as you can see. And I cut the strips the size of my spine and that allows me to get my holes to be parallel and equidistant apart down the length of the spine without having to do a lot of measuring that, that gets in the way. Uh, this is for a five hole pamphlet stitch. And when you do a five hole pamphlet stitch, you have to have two uh, what we call jigs in bookmaking. The other jig, besides the one for the spine, is the one for your pages. And you make the jig the height of your pages, not the height of your book. And the reason for that is that you want to be able to put this in and line everything up very neatly when you're punching your holes. <clears throat> and if it's too long and it has to be moved back and forth, then you tend to get things off. The other trick is to put a T for top and always put that at the top of your pages because despite your best efforts, there may be a slight variation in the distance of the holes and it can make a difference in the way your uh, signatures line up with one another. But if you always use your jig in one direction, then your signatures will all be uh, lining up perfectly in your book. There is a quick way, without a ruler, to create a five-hole jig. When I'm punching uh, uh, items, I really hate using the ruler. So this is the way you can make a five-hole jig without doing anything other than folding. You fold your piece of paper that's the height of your book in half. Then you know that you want it down from the top a little bit. So I just kind of pick something that's 3 eighths to a half an inch, turn over and fold to that line. Now what I have here are folds that are the top hole, the bottom hole, and the middle, middle hole. Now I need to create the holes in between for the five holes. So I take that folded edge and fold it to the middle, thereby making a hole equidistant between those two holes, turn it over and do the same thing. And then when I fold this in half to go inside my signatures, I hope you can see that um, the light hits it just right, that where those lines cross, that's where your five holes are. And that just makes it super simple and then to mark on your spine, you just line those holes up on one of these perpendicular lines and mark where, you, uh, where you're going to be uh, punching and you have not used a ruler for anything. 
So I find that very, very useful. Another couple of things about your punching is, is that when you're punching your cover, do not punch directly into your cutting mat. You will destroy your awl. Use something like this packing foam that I have or, uh, or one of those rubbery mouse pads. And you will notice that I have this jig or pattern <clears throat> taped on here where I'm punching through the spine from the outside. And the reason for that is, is that when you punch your hole, it blows the paper out in the back and you get a little nib. And the cleaner hole is on the side that you punched from. So if you punch this way, you're going to have a clean hole that you can see and that little nib is gonna be on the inside where no one will ever see it. So that's another trick. Uh, punching your signatures, uh, those of us in the, in the bookmaking world have book cradles, but you don't really need a book cradle. What you can do is take a book and line your pages up with your jig inside the book. And if you push down firmly and, and <clears throat> take your awl and go straight down, you'll go right through the crease of the spine and make very nice holes. So that's just a couple of things about binding. Uh, those jigs and things are the same whether you're whether if you're going to do this crisscross, this just happens to have seven instead of five holes, or the pamphlet stitch, the two jig method is the same. So let's do a, a brief uh, run through of the book. One of the things that's been asked of me is how do I get these wonderful sharp images? And it's a combination of two things. I use an Epson Expressions printer and then I use this fabulous paper from Red River Paper that's coated. Uh, it's 32 pound weight <clears throat> and if you uh, put your uh, printer setting on the Epson to presentation mat, uh, it prints out these beautiful uh, ph photographic images and it can do it on both sides. The closure on this is the hitch post with Tim, uh, from Tim Holtz with some seam binding, and there's been some questions about seam binding. I use this Hug Snug. It's a very delicate one. When you crumple it up, it keeps the, the wrinkles. And this is the same as this. This was just sprayed with coffee uh, and shimmer mist. So you can change the color to anything that matches your, uh, your, your cover. So let's do a, a quick uh, flip through. Uh, I use my own uh, marble papers as the insides of this, and you can see it's very similar to the book with a flap. It was a similar uh, marbling technique. Uh, this is from Biltmore. I did use those cupcake holders to make my little uh, tuck spots uh, for my uh, envelopes uh, that I had made with the little writing papers. The uh, Kirby Teasdale uh, papers that I used, uh, I alternated, you know, this was one pattern and then one of the other patterns that I used, I used that for the pockets on the reverse with just some writing paper. I had found these um, doilies at Michael's that were in this purplish blue hue that seemed to work real well and I sprayed the back with the uh, Glimmer Mist, some vellum. my blueberry stain paper. I did use my little seed pouches for pockets and tuck spots. This is a combination of pocket and tuck spot with some of the uh, tags that I had created. This is another Kirby Teasdale pattern. I had some plain uh, white tags from Staples and I just uh, sprayed them with a the glimmer mist. I made some other pages that I don't believe I shared with you before. I just printed them out on blue cardstock from Michaels and I wanted to include some gardening uh, quotes. And Lady Bird Johnson is one of my favorite people from Texas. She started the whole wildflower program that is why the roads in Texas are so beautiful with blue bonnets this time of year. 
some of the writing paper that I created. In my paper bag, I have reduced sizes of images to make little writing spots. More Kirby Teasdale paper. I printed on the back of it. I decided, this is just some uh, deli paper to keep things from sticking while this dried. I decided that in uh, the signature that had the strings, I'd put some little butterflies. When you do the crisscross, there's only strings in one of your uh, two companion uh, signatures. Dernstein. More of the writing paper for some of my pages. And reducing and putting in some of my other images allowed me to, when I made the three books out of all of the images I made, to actually include all of the images in all three of the books. Another pocket. I think my children learned a lot from hauling mulch and planting. This is just a little library pocket and more of that writing paper from reducing uh, some of my imagery. I'd shown you this that I got from the Staples Stationery Department. It was a large writing uh, spot in, a, in an envelope and then I just used, uh, <clears throat> used it by gluing it down on two sides, used it as a tuck spot and included one of my large tags that I actually put two of them together to make a nice big journaling area. That's actually John Campbell Folk School here in North Carolina. Some vellum. And the second signature, both of these I think are um, gardens along the Danube. This was a little, uh, I think I showed you this before, this was a little uh, pocket that was from um, Daphne's Diary magazine. Another one of those uh, large pockets from Staples, and then I made a, this one be a two pocket instead of a tuck. This little bright orange envelope, I didn't know when it was gifted to me where I'd use it, and it just seemed to work beautifully with this, and just use little pieces of the leftover Kirby Teasdale paper and one of my little cards for writing spots. Would that we would remember that. A lot of those wildflowers that we tend to think of as weeds are very hardy and very pretty. Uh, one of the statues at the uh, uh, pond area in, I think, Versailles. That's from Ireland. It was in a little garden. And it's spring here, and that's what inspired this whole idea of gardening book. Another one of the cupcake holders is a tuck spot. The other side, a little paper bag. Another one of the seed packets used as a pocket and as a tuck. And that's also from John Campbell Folk School. So thank you very much for your patience in watching this longer video, but I hope you picked up some tips and tricks that'll help you in your own uh, odyssey of journal junk making. Thank you.